Here's the opportunity. Garden that measures about 12 by 50 feet. Lots of lettuce, beans, peas, corn, way up the to top potatoes. On another video, I showed you how I built my seven foot tall deer fence out of conduit and netting. And that works wonderful. Just yesterday, we had a doe walk from that open spot up there, the whole way in front of those pine trees, over into my woods and never even give the, water, uh, the garden a second glance. But now I have rabbit issues. Other than bothering the spinach and the lettuce a little bit and trimming the beans, it seems they like sweet corn. They eat the bottom one inch and leave the rest lay. You take it off right at ground level. And right there in that picture, you can see, hopefully you can see a couple stumps. And because I don't mow inside the garden fences often, they like this high grass. And there's a pregnant mummy building a little burrow to have her kids in. Right next to my garden, about 20 feet away. Inside my fence, which they have about six four-inch holes chewed through the plastic netting. Okay, this morning we researched all kinds of fencing. One of the things that impressed me most, most was the uh, review of the genuine rabbit fencing that has uh, close spacing in the, at the bottom, two by two or along those lines, and then four inches at the top. And the one guy remarked that it worked great if your rabbits had short legs, but his didn't. And uh, he was impressed with the giggling they did after they stood up and went through the four inch part at 28 inches off the ground. And I talked to a friend of mine that has a 28 inch rabbit fence and he says they, get, they, they can hop it like nothing. So I'm going to build a 36 inch fence and I got on uh, Lowe's website and I bought 24 inch poultry netting or chicken wire that's your, with the octagon holes, two inch there's a close-up of the label. This brand's Blue Hawk. It's made in China. It says two foot by 50 foot and uh, two inch mesh. And for posts, my favorite cheap post is 10 foot conduit. And I uh, found a promotional code on Retail Me Not where I got 10% off. This whole job is going to cost $50 for 150 feet of fence. The bill of materials that I'm using today are this piece of pipe with four inches marked off with a piece of duct tape that I'm going to drive into the ground to make the hole with the sledgehammer. Five pieces of half inch galvanized conduit which I'm going to cut each piece in uh, 40 inch lengths. Three, so you'll need a tape measure, a hacksaw, and I'm going to drill holes in it, so you need a drill with about a quarter inch bit, a hammer, and a punch to uh, start your hole, else your bit will wander all over the place. About 75 inches of plastic three quarter one inch water pipe that I'm going to put in the hole so I don't have to keep redoing holes, and if I want to I can just pull the post out and move it a little bit to trim or whatever and some zip ties for the attachment. These are all left over from a deer fence. So here's the math. We've got 10 foot posts. They're 120 inches long. Cut them in three pieces. That makes 40 inch posts. Five pieces I have makes 15 posts. I'm going to put four inches in the ground. That leaves 36 out of the ground. Those uh, conduit with the 10% off coupon, all five total, $12. And I bought 24 inch netting, chicken wire. I'm going to drape four inches on the ground in case they want to burrow, which leaves 20 inches out. So I'll drill a holes at uh, five inches off the ground, 19 inches off the ground, and one inch from the top. So I'm going to run it around twice. I have enough to uh, go around twice at 36 inches. First one will go around at 20 inches and then I'll have some overlap and uh, take the other one around 
attaching it to the post with a zip ties. That's what I'm going to attempt to do today. Here's the part where I got to tell you it took me five minutes to fix this cheap ass Chinese hacksaw. Can't cut straight with it. Went in and smashed the rivets in the vise to uh, put it back together. Just a timeout to be continued. After you're done hacksawing these and also after you drill your holes, you're going to have some nasty burrs. And uh, so taking a piece of coarse sandpaper and dust those off so you don't cut yourself while you're trying to put up the fence. Now that I have all 15 of these burred, deburred off the ends, that's when I remember I have a half inch pipe cutter I could have used. So if you have a half inch pipe cutter in your toolbox, that might make the job a little easier for you than using a hacksaw and a piece of sandpaper. Probably save you 10 minutes anyway. I made marks on my tabletop where I'm going to uh, mark the pipe for holes. So I only have to measure once. I just lay the pipe in this little groove on the tabletop here. I decided to make this first dimension six inches because there'd be about five, um, four in the ground, one covered with plastic pipe, and then that'll leave me about an inch higher to use zip tie. And the other one, uh, 20 inches, and then another one about an inch from the end. Not critical that. I just marked the table, that way I don't have to get the tape measure out 15 times. Next I tapped a little dent in the pipe in all three places where I'm going to drill with this sharp point punch and a hammer. That'll keep my drill bit from drifting whenever I go to start my hole. Okay, there's my first hole. This is when you find out if the drill bit you selected is too dull to uh, do steel because you've been using it for 10 years and not even looking at the tip. So I went and found one that actually did work. And now I have to do this 44 more times. Okay, three tips. First being sweep all those sharp chips off your picnic table before the wife comes out or the grandkids show up. That'll save you from hearing them ear full of unpleasantness. Next you're going to have a lot of sharp burrs on the uh, backside, especially of these uh, holes you just drilled. And in a machine shop, they would put on what's called a chamfer, and that's simply taking a much larger bit than the one you drilled the hole with and putting your drill and buzzing around that hole, and that'll peel that chip right off. Okay, we well, have all our posts cut, drilled, deburred, and I cut 16 four and a half inch pieces of black plastic pipe that those are going to set in in the ground. Now I cut an extra one so whenever I make a gate and I open the gate I can set it in the extra hole and it'll be uh, out of the way without getting in the way. Well it's the next day we got interrupted by thunderstorms last night. This is why I have to fence my garden. You see a fence post, that's an old fence post. And about five feet to the right of it, in the tree line, is a doe. She was here last night, snorting at me. And my garden's right over here. You can see the deer fence I put up. Plastic netting and conduit. Learned to love the conduit for cheap posts. 10 foot conduit. I have a video on YouTube how I built that. Pretty much the same method I'm going to use for chicken wire. And she's probably got two babies hidden down in my berry bushes right over there. That's where she was complaining to me last night, snort doing her snorting thing when I went out to check on things in the garden. Okay, I just walked up within 50 feet of her. And, uh, she's not doing anything. I'm sure she can hear me talking, for God's sake. I can hear anything. Yeah, there you are. You're not allowed in my garden. I use a lot of these ground spikes for the bottom of my fences to keep uh, animals from sliding underneath. 
And I like to paint the tops of them a nice hot color. Leftover paint from another project. Grandchild's rocking chair. So I'm going to paint these up so it makes them a heck of a lot easier to spot when they're in the grass. Okay, now we're ready to set our posts in the plastic plugs that we made from the water line. And I tapped uh, my galvanized pipe with a cap on it down in there until it reached where I had it marked with the duct tape. Pull that out of there. Should have a pretty decent hole. Put our fence post plug in. And then our fence post is ready to set with about an inch sticking out for our bottom twist tie for the chicken fence. If it needs to go up or down, you can tap the top with a hammer or whatever. It's not an exact science. Then we have our holes. Put our first 24 inch row on and our hole about an inch from the top for our second row of 24 inch fence. And since we measured out 50 feet, that's what we're going to do next after I tap in the rest of the fence posts. I started measuring off the job. The fencing that we bought is 50 feet long. And I want to leave enough room between my garden and the fence to get my wheelbarrow through because I have to haul my water up here. It's about 300 feet from the faucet. So I put it in those milk jugs as I refuse to buy hose. Someday, maybe I will. But anyway, I don't want to exceed 50 feet because I don't want to be shorter than 50 feet and I don't want to be longer than 50 feet. I want to use up that whole roll going up the side. And then uh, because we're using two rolls per side, that'll keep us uh, from cutting a lot of wire. So I'm going to uh, probably measure this out about 49 feet. So I have six inches to go around the last post. And then for my short runs across the garden, uh, we'll uh, be cutting wire, be cutting wire for the gate to let me in also. We made 15 posts. This one's going to be my gate. This is where I'm going to come in. I already test drove the wheelbarrow through it. This uh, closest uh, post to the left will be removable, as they all will. I'll put a plug in the ground over here to set it aside. It'll pivot off of this post, run to the corner, and that left us eight. Uh, after I put the corner posts in where I wanted it, I left us eight posts, which meant I ran four up the side every 10 feet. And that gives us uh, two corners and four in the middle for a 50 foot run. That should work out really well. When I did my deer fence, which is just on the opposite side of that, I didn't measure nothing. I didn't use a straight edge, straight line. I could have saved myself $20 on an extra roll of uh, deer netting if I would have uh, measured my job before I started it. I keep a lot of coffee cans, plastic coffee cans up the garden. I keep everything in there from scissors for cutting lettuce and string for tying up tomatoes, fishing line for peas and cucumbers and whatnot. Anything that I keep carrying back and forth to the garden doesn't fit in my pocket. I just leave it up here, watertight. Can't, or even fertilizer in that Maxwell House can. Yeah. Just keep it all up here. It stays nice and dry inside the coffee cans and handy. Okay, like me, you've never really worked with chicken wire before. So this is when you go back down to the house, get a drink of water, a pair of scissors to get the plastic off, knife didn't work very well, and a pair of pliers with wire cutting feature because what holds this bundle of chicken wire together is a master wire that they have doubled back all through the chicken wire that I'm going to have to figure out how to get out of there and a pair of pliers is going to be a lot easier than trying to get it out of there with my fingers. I just cut off whatever I don't need and I'm try and unwind this thing. But you got to get that master wire that holds the bundle together removed. Time to unroll our first piece. I've taken three sawed spikes. Seems the end's tapered on here, kind of tongue-shaped. 
and I'll start on rolling it and we'll see if 50 feet in China is the same as 50 feet in the United States because when we get to the other end. Time out. I took uh, one of my fence posts and put it through the center of the roll. So uh, make it like a rolling pin so I can unwind it easier. Unwinding it without that is going to be very time consuming. I hope this helps it along and put gloves on in case there's any sharp edges. <laughs> Live and learn. Set the uh, three ground spikes up at the end of your 50 feet so when you get the 48 you can stick them in the ground because if you don't, when it comes off and the end of that roll goes flying down through the yard like a roller coaster ride and ends up in a big pile down in where you started from. I don't know how I'm going to get that back up there. Those tapered tongue shaped ends can be uh, unfolded to make them relatively straight. Uh, what I did was uh, took that big roll, put my hoe handle through it. Was able to uh, get it back up here. Now you see, I got three ground spikes holding it in place, so that doesn't happen again. So our fence is all stretched out down along there. I don't know if I'm going to try and work the kinks out of it. Doesn't have to be super tight. Probably easier to work with if there is a little bit of slack in it. I lifted the fence up and zip tied the closest edge to me to the hole in the center of the post. And then I went up the row and I used my uh, sawed spikes to lift up the rest of the fence temporarily. I just used sawed spikes through the holes. I'm going to attach in the second row of loops mainly because I have plenty left on the ground which will help keep the rabbits from burrowing under. I'll have to heck of a longer trip to get under that. And I'm going to leave the skirt to the outside of the fence so I'm not tramping on it when I'm working in the garden. And um, having those temporary there will allow me to help stretch my top as I go up along zip tying them. So I'll stretch to whatever hole I need in the second row of the fence as I uh, stretch it up on across. I'm not making my zip tie loops completely tight because if I have to remove them then I can get a knife blade behind them and uh, they'll pop right off. I have my first row in the middle of the uh, fence post all tied up one end to the other and it really didn't take that long. I'm sure it would be go faster if you had somebody holding it while you were putting the zip ties in, but you can do it by yourself. Okay, the bottoms are all attached now and we're ready to add the second row of 24 inch chicken wire. I'm going to unroll it using sawed spikes. I uh, pre-positioned three at the other end so when I get to my end of my roll it don't go flying back down through the yard. And uh, I'm going to attach it to the top hole. Jesus H. Corn Dog. Warning Proposition 65. This product contains a chemical known to the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. I don't know if it's a plastic bag that it came in or the galvanized wire we're using, but boy, that ought to screw the rabbits up. This is no longer a rabbit fence. Since I read that warning label, I'm going to call this my Pelosi fence. We'll keep Nancy Pelosi the hell out of my garden. Okay, I've rolled out the second row of chicken wire. At the far end, it had a bit of a defect. The wire was kind of folded about uh, eight inches from one side. I don't think it's going to matter because the side that I'm going to attach to the top of the post was manufactured and the uh, defect is going to be um, during, in the overlap area so I don't consider it a big whoop at this point. Um, thank you to the Chinese for defective chicken wire and stink bugs. Okay I've attached the second roll. I attached it uh, three octagons above or below the uh, top wire. So now we have 
probably about a 40 inch fence. And you remember that wire that we used, we had to remove from the roll to get it unwound. I'm going to cut it in three or four inch pieces with my pliers and use it to bring these two halves together about every two feet so we have a, no place for the bunnies to sneak up through. I won't be wasting zip ties. I don't have any other use for that wire so that's going to turn out real nice. Well we made a lot of progress. I spent the last half hour using these little two inch pieces of wire as a twist tie to close the gaps where the seams overlap so they're not tempted to crawl up underneath any open areas. I'm going to try and dress up the top end of that a little bit. looks kind of saggy. I'll keep the rabbits out, but I'm going to see if I can make that look a little bit better. But I uh, also put the ground spikes in about every there's one. About every three, three and a half feet at the outer edge of my skirt that hangs down. And that'll keep the rabbits from hopefully burrowing underneath. We'll see how that works out. I can put a second row in need be. I bought 200 of them on eBay shipped at a house from some guy in California for uh, about 25 bucks. A lot cheaper than any other stores I could find. Well, since I completed this 50-foot section, it uh, won't do any good to show you how I do the other 50 feet because it's going to be the same. But important things that I learned along the way is find your half-inch pipe cutter or borrow one. It's a lot easier than hacksawing. Uh, you might not have to drill the bottom hole. Uh, zip tie down there since it's not supporting any weight. Well here we go. With a 7 inch skirt at the bottom and about a 4 inch overlap in the center we end up with a 39 inch fence. And no rabbit's going to jump that sucker. Now I've rolled out my second 50 foot for the opposite side of the garden. The tomatoes, the rabbits don't bother those. The deer fence, deer deer devastate them. They, they like to pick the first green one they see. Instead of me getting it, they got it. That's why I put up the deer fence. Found out that the rabbits feel very secure in being inside that. Two little wee four inch holes that you can get in and out of. Hence the chicken wire for the rest of the garden that the rabbits really do enjoy. Had one in here again last night. About 8.30 I came out and chased them. Too close to houses to shoot high-powered weapons and it's not hunting season. I don't want to get any phone calls to the township, so... Hence, $50 chicken fence. Somewhere in, Ch somewhere in China there's an 8-year-old kid laughing his butt off. He knows I'm never going to get this roll started. I think at the end it disappears in there about four layers. I can't even begin to think where it is been playing with it for five minutes already. The way I resolved that was just a yank on it. It, it finally just popped right up. We now have our second row rolled out. Remember to always work uh, the edge of fence closest to the inside. I ran my fence on the outside of the posts. It just seems to make sense. And uh, when you work with the edge closest to the inside you're not trying to fold the fence over to try and bring that other edge up around and when I rolled that out on the third fourth and fifth post I just uh, dropped the netting down over the post and then uh, that kind of held it in place while I was going up through there held it up off the ground and I'll work with that edge bring that up three squares above the post or two squares get a 40 inch 39 inch fence well here's a mistake it rained last night the ground got soft while I was trying to pull the fence tight for the second post I didn't know I was pulling my first post along 
Now I gotta figure out how to straighten that up and uh, so I attach the rest of the uh, wire to the correct spacing on the post. I have to fix this slanted post. Well, I resolved that by uh, putting an iron piece of 3 8 or half inch, uh, probably about 3 8 iron pipe down in there over two feet and uh, zip tied that first post to that. And I'll probably leave it in place and I may do that on my other corner posts uh, because I like to get the wire stretched a little bit but with ground soft uh, you're going to always pull on the prior post. We have the second 50 foot section done with ground spikes. Again, flaring it towards the outside to uh, discourage burrowing. And uh, adding another post on the corners so you have tight corners. Seems to be the way to go. That's just down in the ground about 18 inches, I suppose. And I was able to straighten out my posts. You know, putting a fence on. Crooked posts make for crooked fences. The ones in the middle don't have any stress on them, so they're fine. They're just there for su vertical support, but these corner posts are there for lateral support. I've almost finished the end with the gate in it, and I wanted to show you that. I still have an open end up on the other end, and I'm not going to bother filming that because it's just more of the same. But this gate, I'm kind of pleased with the way it turned out. The key to the gate, the lock, is one of these ground spikes. One leg in this post, one leg in that post. Just pull that out. Lift it out of the hole that we used with the plastic water pipe. Move it over into the extra one we cut. Set it down in that hole, and there's our gate open. Wide enough for a wheelbarrow. Get in and out with my water, and to uh, when I pick, just slide it right back. Drop in the ground spike. Gate's locked. I think that would even work for my neighbor. Sherry, I want to share with you real quick uh, my first attempt at keeping deer and rabbits out of the garden. This is 25 bucks. Yeah, it's supposed to emit a high-pitched sound. And the only thing that's kept out of my garden is my grandchildren. Last year we had a picnic and one of the grandkids wandered up here and that thing went off and he's never been right since. He was five years old and it, it, he had nightmares. I'm going to walk in front of you. You can hear it. you got good ears. I haven't, I've never heard the thing. That didn't even go off. Well, I don't know if it went off or not. I can't hear it. Yeah, a little red light's going on. Piece of crap. I just learned a lesson on this end of the job, my last end. I think no matter how long your run is, stretch your wire between the two corners and get it as tight as you need, as tight as you can, tie it off, and then set your center posts, your ones that run across the middle, in afterwards, and tie them off wherever the fence naturally lies. I went one by one by one, stretch, 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 stretch. All I really need to do is stretch it from corner to corner, and then just set the center, all the other posts, in later and tie the fence off at that point. I think that would have worked a lot faster and a lot better. So keep that in mind. What was the hardest part about this job was this last roll, that wire that you tied up with, ran all through the coil and had a big knot on one end, almost like a, a uh, tying your shoes. I end up cutting in about 12 pieces to get it off of there. I'm calling this one finished rabbit fence. Boxes in all my vegetables that the rabbits like. They don't bother the tomatoes, so they're out there on their own uh, tomato fence. Put that in two years ago. 
because I grow romas and uh, they get eight feet tall eventually couldn't keep them up with stakes you get a summer storm in uh, late August and they just blow right over so I put them on this fence but uh, stay tuned for the bonus footage we're gonna go visit my neighbor's rabbit fence I think you'll enjoy that trip so some tips that I figured out along the way is first time I've ever done this so I'm learning put strong corner posts in stretch your entire run from corner post to corner post and then fill the posts in the middle you don't need to drill the third hole that's on the bottom of the post because uh, the ground spikes will hold the fence in position so that's an extra hole you don't have to drill and I think there's a few other tips I learned along the way so stay tuned we're gonna go visit my neighbor's fence here's his irrigation system flat roof garage bunch of barrels and here's his rabbit slash deer fence we start out with a snow sled baby gates duct tape rope lattice work electric cable sliding glass door screen bent one side of a dog cage the front of a box fan a barbecue grill screen and the door of the dog cage the dog passed away by the way of old age a screen a uh, soccer net that was uh, the plastic tubing became part of his irrigation system. The netting was used as a fence. Somebody threw that away. There's a, some kind of aluminum handle, some more lattice work, another part of a dog cage in front of a different box fan. And yet another box fan. Some more lattice work. This blueberry bush has some of the soccer netting on there, gold netting. The rest of the dog cage. Well, there's actually two dog cages here. He told me $170 worth of dog cage. Some more duct tape rope. It does go through three rolls of duct tape a week. And uh, I don't know what that is. Some kind of handle off of something. And another bobsled for the snow. Some more baby gate. He thinks it's baby gate. He picks it up. I, I call this his Wednesday fence because garbage man comes Wednesday morning, so he picks things up Tuesday out of the neighbor's trash all over town and adds it to his fence. And that's a tour of this rabbit fence. Now we have another neighbor with a combination rabbit deer fence. We'll go. She had to buy uh, posts. For some reason my camera keeps shutting off, so if I repeat myself, sorry, but the screen keeps going dark. This is all store-bought stuff. She got about a hundred bucks in post and fence here, easy, a lot smaller than mine. Those are your options. I don't like that one because first four-inch space wrap can get through is about 16 inches off the ground. Back to my garden. Tonight will be the first night I don't have to leave the house after supper or first thing in the morning to chase rabbits out of my garden and inspect what kind of damage they've done. I feel very confident in this fence. There is one scary part of this project. The guy you've been listening to. Your unconscious mechanic with a rabbit fence.